Welcome and thank you for joining us once again for another fantastic episode of The Craft Show. Joining us here at the craft show for another well 40 45 minutes of happy and fun crafting chat silliness all sorts of things that you like and have come to expect from the craft show of course now just a quick reminder that we're not available on regular television we are available online so visit YouTube and hunt for the craft show and you'll find us on there but very important please remember to click that subscribe button and a big thumbs up if you like that as well because YouTube like it and if YouTube like it that helps our ratings that means more people see the show and of course that means we can keep delivering you some fantastic crafty demonstrations and chat now as with every craft show we have a great guest joining us today to give you a demonstration and that guest today is none other than Claire Hart. Claire how are you Hello. doing? Are you welcome? Yeah. Are you welcome? What am I saying? <laughs> I don't know am I? Get my to yeah of course you are of course you are. So Claire's come into the studio today and she's going to be showing us something a little bit different to anything that we've had on the show before but you're going to enjoy it but before we start that Claire can you tell us a little bit about your background and, and what you like to do in terms of crafting? Yep, I'm a, um, a stained glass artist, craftsperson. Um, I mainly teach now. I do, I do some little commissions as well and bits and bobs. Excellent. Um, yep, I did, studied ceramics and glass originally. Yes. So I do do some pottery as well. You do some pottery yep. as well. And I think we're probably going to see some of that on a future show, actually. Hopefully, a bit of, bit, yeah. of, bit of pottery <laughs> as well. Uh, if you like that, give us a big thumbs up. Hopefully you will. So um, we're going to be doing some stained glass. Now... I was, you know, I was looking forward to it, but I was a little bit concerned when we were doing stained glass <laughs> because I was thinking about, you know, we're in this nice, clean environment. Yeah. Of course, we're at the craft centre in Bourne. From Alison Bunning has very kindly loaned us her space as always, and I was a bit concerned about the mess and that sort of thing. But because it can be a messy yep. craft, yeah, my it? workshop at today. home is nowhere near as lovely and tidy as this is, <laughs> um, and I would normally be standing at a at a workbench, okay. so sitting down. But you can do it sitting down, but you know, as a beginner, you might find it slightly easier. Standing. Standing. Okay, so we've not ticked any of the boxes there for Claire so far. But she's not standing, <laughs> and it's not dirty enough for her. You can't win, can you? You know me so well. But, <laughs> but we're gonna, it's, it's actually quite a nice, clean job that we're going to be doing today. Yeah, but today we're just going to do a little sun catcher like this. Okay. So a little sun catcher. So what would you, we hang that in the window, perhaps yeah. in a glazed door? Yeah, I mean, I did a little rainbow one here. Make a lovely little gift, wouldn't mm -hmm. it? A little rainbow. You could do that as a little... Somebody's had a little bit of a sad time, and you wanted to... Cheer them up. Cheer them up with a little... Rainbow I really like that and it's hard to believe that that's something that you can do in the comfort of your own home and in the yeah. actual fact you've got some other fantastic pieces that you've made here as well yeah. including we've got tulip there very very nice and then we've got oh my little birdie <laughs> this oh. is the sort of thing that if you came to a one-day workshop with me Okay. These would be the sort of panels that you would do, just as a beginner's panel, just yeah. a one-day workshop. And don't forget, of course, uh, most of our craft guests do run workshops and various groups. Um, if we wanted to come to one of your workshops, Claire, where would we find out the details? Yeah, you can that? email me. I've got lots of things going on throughout the year. Mm -hmm. I do private tuition as well, so if you just want to come with you and a friend, yes. or you and the hubby, or... Okay, me and the, the wife hubby. or you and the <laughs> whoever, yeah. you know, I can sort of fit you in. Excellent. Yeah. And so uh, what's your website address, just so we can uh, find out? I don't have a home. website at the moment. It's okay. still under construction, but right. um, they can email me. Okay. And it's uh, heart.claire yes. at uh, live.co.uk. And that's heart, H-A-R-T. H-A-R-T and Claire with an I. Claire with an I. An I. <laughs> She's time maintenance, isn't she? <laughs> And an, e. and an E. <laughs> and an A. So give it to us again. It's heart, H A R T, <laughs> dot Claire, Claire with an I. I R E. Yeah. At, at live.co.uk. At live.co.uk. Okay, so don't forget, uh, email Claire if you'd like to find out some more about her crafty workshops. And they are in Lincolnshire, they South are, Lincolnshire. Yeah, South as well. Lincolnshire. And then you've got this piece here, just very quickly before this we start. Is this is a lantern. Yeah, this is something that I've just started on, and I haven't obviously finished the other two sides of yet. Mm -hmm. um, it's just a commercially bought lantern. I think it was a home based BQ, something like that. Mm -hmm. Had plain glass in it. Oh, okay. And it just has these little clips at the top. Okay. So I've just taken Taking the plain, plain glass out. 
and replaced um, it. And just made some little panels like we're going to make today. Mm -hmm. And the only thing I you like. need to be careful with that is you need to take your measurements accurately. Oh, OK. Measure twice, cut once. Absolutely, yeah. As we yep. often say. OK, fantastic. Well, without further ado, let's get crafting. Yeah. Okay, so what do we need to do first? Right, the basis of any good stained glass panel, okay, um, or any bad one in fact, is the pattern. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, and patterns often get overlooked because um, students get very enthusiastic about all the sparkly, beautiful glass. Yeah. Um, and they they often have a pattern that isn't quite, you know, firmed up, and it might be sort of a little bit of pencil drawing or whatever and yep. you really need a good ink tin pattern okay. that's accurate. And you've just drawn this yourself, just, this is not a comparing to another no, computer. No, 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 this is actually based on um, a quilting block, you know, like oh, a patchwork okay. quilting yeah, block, that, which, which make, actually, for anyone lacking inspiration, quilting blocks make really good patterns because oh, okay. they're nice geometric you measure, that's what, you've heard that here first, so yeah, that's good. So, that, that's so you've really measured good. that out and measure twice, cut once. Yeah, absolutely. If it's got, if you want it to be square, actually yeah. get a set square on it and make sure it is square. Make sure your borders are measure them and everything else. You don't so, want it to be a bit squiffy. No, you don't want it to be squiffy. No, only on a Friday. Yeah, we don't mind that on a Friday. <laughs> be squiffy enough. Okay, so, so what do we need to? How do we start? So the basis of making your, your panel is to, is to cut the glass. So I'm just going to teach you how to cut glass. Okay. First. So first things first, let's get your safety goggles on. I'm going to put my reading glasses yeah, on. Yeah, I can see that I'm the only one that's looking stupid. <laughs> if the cap fits. <laughs> Don't hold back. Um, no, in all seriousness, it is important we're dealing yeah, with glass. Safety um, first. You know, and if you've got a big diamond ring, you might want to use that. But yeah, I, I you've don't got have one of those. Don't have one of those. <laughs> if you if you want to send one of those in. Uh, we'll give you the address. So you've got a special tool there. I do have a special tool, yeah. This is a, um, a Toyo glass cutter. Mm -hmm. um, it's basically a little tungsten wheel in the bottom here. This won't cut you, so you're alright. Okay. Um, oil filled up the middle. Okay. And it's got a little screw head there. The screw head needs to be facing out. Think of him as that little face. Yes. So that, that reminds you to put that out. Okay. And I think of my glass cutter as a little man on a unicycle. I'm not quite sure where she's going with this. <laughs> Bear with me. So he's okay <laughs> going forwards to backwards. Yes. But if he goes side to side, he's going to fall off. And oh, that okay, is that makes because sense. the little wheel, I'll do mm -hmm. a, little, a little drawing here, the little wheel in the bottom of your glass cutter is shaped like this. Mm -hmm. this, is, this is the head of the cutter here. Okay. Excuse my... That's the bottom of your glass cutter. And you're on the point of that little wheel. Yes. Um, so if you're leaning side to side, you're going to be on the facet. Okay. So you, of the, that wheel, and then you're not going to get a good score line. Okay, so it needs to be a nice clean cut. You so, want to keep yeah. it nice so and straight. So basically, your cutter, you, your cutter is actually, it's actually a snap rather than a... Okay. So you, well, if you were tiling. Yes. Yeah. Exactly the same principle. There's anybody out yeah. there that's in a bit of bathroom tiling. Yeah, this exactly is much so more glamorous. So it's a snap rather than... So you can't come in and just stop. No. Because you've got okay. to snap right the way through. All the way through. All the way okay, through. good. So we're going to make a score line and... We're going to then make a crack, and the crack is going to follow the score line. Okay. So we start from one side of the glass to that. I'm just going to do this freehand to start off with, um, just to, so people can gain a bit of confidence and, and, and see what's going on. So just come from one side to the other, like that. Did ah, you hear that? I did hear that, yes. It should sound like somebody ripping a piece of fabric. Yes. Now, I don't know if you can see that. Can you see that on camera? Just about. Uh, you can see it. It's like a little score line, and you should be able to just about see if we feel can it show with your fingernails. Home, you can just about can see, you see that. see that little score line there, maybe? We can see You'll it's there. You'll be able there. to see it with the naked eye. We can see it. On the other end of your cutter, you have a ball. Okay. Uh, tap underneath the score line that you've just made. Okay. Tap. Oh my word! That actually fell off. But, yeah. Um, it probably wasn't supposed to fall off quite like that. But that's surprising. Well, I'll just do that again. Another score line. So tap underneath. Okay. Now, can you see that crack is now yep. cracked? Yes. Yes. If you make two fists with your thumbs. Yeah. Your thumbs up. And, snap. and that snaps. That's dead easy. Well, listen, before we go any further, because I know you're going to go onto the, the, the coloured glass, I just want to show you, we always ask people to send in, we've asked a few people to send in some crafty items with the craft show on, and this was sent in by Jackie Reader. So, hi, Jackie, if you're watching. Uh, she sent us this beautiful canvas, and also, there'll be a photo on the screen for you to have a look at now, and also from Dawn McPhee. She sent us in this wonderful uh, binder as well. Looks absolutely mm -hmm. beautiful. And again, uh, use a range of sort of crafty items there to, to create. And we just really wanted to take this opportunity before we move on to the glass to say hi. So hi, girls. Hi. And uh, please do keep sending us stuff. I love that. I love the butterfly on that. It's fantastic, beautiful, isn't, it? isn't it? Beautiful. 
Okay, so we're gonna we've had a bit of a practice. Yeah. We're gonna move on to the coloured glass. We are. Now I'm just gonna point out, I'm yes. just noticing here as, as you were showing the lovely things. Okay. I've got a few little glass chips here. Ah. That you can just see shining in the night. Yes. And whenever you're working with glass, have a little yes. dustpan and brush. Yes. Uh, that you just keep for that purpose. And your goggles. And your goggles, yep. And just sweep up. And sweep I noticed you've got it on the newspaper I, here I, as well. I have. Now, I always work on the Daily Telegraph. Is that a requirement? <laughs> no, no, it can oh. be any newspaper. It's just that my lovely neighbour yes. saves them for me. Ah, so, uh, okay. And they are nice and big. So it's kind of a craft collaboration. It is a craft, yeah, can we yeah. say who your neighbour is? <laughs> His name's James. That's all James. I can say. <laughs> Thanks, James, for sending in. And we know he's a, he's a very well-to-do chap because he reads the Daily Telegraph. He's lovely. Okay. <laughs> right. <laughs> what, are we, what are we doing now? Okay, right. So we're now going to move on to actually cutting shapes, which is slightly different to just cutting a strip off. So I'm okay. going to turn the pattern over and we're now going to have a little go at cutting shapes. Right. So if you're going to cut a shape out, you have to think of it. You can't just come in and cut round a shape like that. You've got to think of each side of the shape as a separate score line. Okay. So... What I'm going to do is, um, if you've got a straight edge, my straight, this edge isn't straight, so I'm going to start off with a straight edge. So I'm going to use a rule this time because we're using straight edges. Mm -hmm. um, I am left-handed, so anybody who's watching this is right-handed, remember to do it the other way around. Yes. Because <laughs> that confuses people. Okay, yeah. As strange left-handed people. Now, the thing to remember <laughs> cutting down a rule <clears throat> is that the heads of these cutters twist ever so slightly, and that's okay. to help you go around some nice corners. Okay. You can go all the way around. Um, but when you're cutting down a rule, the, the, the bad side of that is that your cutter can twist into the rule mm -hmm. and then you're, you're on that facet of the wheel that I was talking about. So you actually need to put your cutter against the rule, mm -hmm. hold on to the rule, hold on to the glass and hold a finger down there mm -hmm. so that you're actually slicing down the rule. So you come down the rule like that and you're stopping that from twisting in. Okay. And I'm sense? guessing there'll be a slight margin between your cut and the rule, because obviously there's yeah. a yeah, you've the got wheel that, is inset you've got that slightly. Distance there. Yeah. So you need to be conscious of that when yeah. you're. So um, once we've got this little piece up, I'll show you where to align it then. That's that seems. So is that just? Do you just make that look easy, or is it? Is it really that straightforward? When you've been doing it for twenty-five years, <laughs> I'm so old. <laughs> when I worked that out the other day, didn't it made me feel a hundred? <laughs> we think you look great, don't you? Right, okay, so I've got a straight edge, so I'm actually, I'm going to cut this piece here. Mm -hmm. um, so we've got a straight edge, so I'm putting it in the correct place. Now, when you have your patterns, when you draw your patterns, one of the other things you need to do is the black lines really need to be a millimetre wide. And that sounds okay. a bit odd that you, you need it to be there. But that is because when we make the, um, the panels, we're, we're going to use an H section lead. Okay. And the glass is going to sort of fit in either side. Okay. Like this. I understand, yeah. Um, and that, that black line represents the middle of your That lead. makes sense. So that makes sense. ideally, yeah. um, one of these, Sharpie. A Sharpie. Um, I'm sorry to say, other brands I'm sure do do it, but Sharpies are really Sharpies good. are the way forward. Yeah, do you know what, they you, would be you my crafty guests like the Sharpies? Yeah, 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 and especially when they're, they're marked down in Tesco's as well, uh, after Christmas. Oh. Other supermarkets I always, are available. Yeah, other supermarkets are available, but yeah, it's great. So if you, if you just put your glass... Just it, we are talking a hair's breadth inside the black line. Okay. So mm -hmm. literally, you can see a tiny little. Bit a of hair's breadth. breadth. A hair's breadth. Or as we used to say, where I come from, a nuts chuff. Yeah, absolutely. So Very then I'm then chuff. going to see where my the, the actual wheel of my cutter's falling mm -hmm. on the on this line here. So I'm pushing it up against the rule. I'm closing one eye actually, which is probably grimacing away at you. And then I'm just going to cut that down there. Okay. Okay. You can go right from the end, though, I noticed. Oh. Is that intentional? No, it's oh. just very near the end. I didn't mean to point that out. Edit that out, Steve. <laughs> so that's cut, <laughs> that's cut that stretch It there. doesn't stopped it, though. It hasn't made a difference. No, you right I think it's edge. such a, a strong crack by that point that it probably won't. It goes through, yeah. And then this glass just happens to be almost the right length, and so I'm just going to cut the other way. Now, I'm just going to do this all freehand because there is no point in... Uh, Getting the I always imagine that looks there. a bit more, a bit more uh, difficult if it's a smaller piece that you've got to take off. It looks as though it might be more well, difficult. I'm going it? to illustrate that to, to show you the grazing size actually, which is the thing that we need use to uh, take little pieces off. So I'm just going to cut a little score line there. 
Okay. Now you notice that I'm going the other way. Yes. Whereas I've been coming down the rule towards What's the reason me. For that, because then? if I was coming the other way, I wouldn't be able to see where I was going because my hand would be over the top oh, of the I line. Oh, I understand. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Right. <laughs> so when you're cutting specific shapes, you will need to turn. You'll need to go the other way. Okay. And one of the reasons you always have a loose pattern when you're doing stained glass is so that you can turn the pattern and you're not trying to turn yourself. Oh, okay. Round the corner and. I understand. Yeah. So yeah. turn the pattern, that makes not, sense. not yourself. Yeah. Now these are called. Grossing breaking pliers. So okay. We call them all sorts of funny names. Groveling pliers. So are they special sorts. pliers? Though? They are special pliers. They're not just yep. pli pli just regular pliers. No, they're they? not. They've got very small teeth on them. They have got teeth, but they're little teeth. Okay. Um, and, and are they specifically loaded. for this job? They are specifically for yeah. So where would we get something like um, that? Any of the big glass stained glass suppliers. Okay. So what online? We yeah, don't look online. online. Yeah, and grossing breaking pliers. Okay. Basically called grossing break breaking pliers. pliers. Yeah. Okay. Or, or grossing pliers. Breaking pliers are slightly different yes. because uh, they're a bigger set of pliers. But, but it's grossing. But grossing. Okay. Yeah. So you see, I've got my little score line there. Now that's too small for me to tap. If I tried to tap that, okay. I just wouldn't get anywhere. So you use these like an extension of your fingers, basically. Okay. Um, now, technically, you are supposed to use them with the flat blade up. Yes. For for breaking. Yes. I actually always use mine with the curved side up. Okay. It's just my preference. Whether it's a left-handed thing, I don't know. Okay. You know, whatever you fancy. And you put the pliers along the line of the crack. Okay, hang on a minute. Put your glasses on, say a prayer. <laughs> and it works. And that works. The prayer. Yeah. yeah. Now, if you were making, when we get down to the leading, which is a bit further down the line, but when we get around to the leading, if your if your bit of glass was a little bit too big, okay, you could do that process that we've just done there. Put a little tiny score line on mm -hmm. and just take a bit off. Okay. Likewise, if you were doing a pattern with curves and you just wanted to trim a bit off, you can just use these. Almost like nibbling away nibbling. at it's it. It's very like biting your fingernails, yes. actually, because I'm not crushing the glass with my pliers. I'm just holding on to the glass with my pliers, and I'm, I'm wriggling the glass yes. up against these teeth. Oh, OK. That makes sense. But you must have your glasses on for doing okay. those kind of things, because that is when you might actually get a little piece fly at you. OK. So can I just ask you a couple of questions about the glass before we move on? Because, of course, one of the things that went through my mind when we, when we first sat down to talk about the demonstration was... I think these are amazing pieces and clearly it's something that you can do at home. But where do I get the stuff from? Because this is not something presumably I can just no. just go to a regular shop and buy. No, no, no. Um, there are lots of specialist uh, craft suppliers, and glass suppliers uh, up and down the country. Mm -hmm. um, thinking of a few yeah. creative Pearson, okay. Thamesford, the three probably main ones. So have a look online. For and, and a few other little shops dotted around as well. Always look at, worth looking. You know. Always have a look for your local craft shop, of course. If you've got Absolutely. something local that does it, we're, yeah. we're all in Or even a local, local stained glass artist who might be able to sell off you know, some scraps. Good because idea. It's a good place to start is to buy scraps. And to buy some because scraps. you get lots of different colours. And you've got some beautiful colours here. And I, and I didn't know. Um, you know, did you colour these yourself? Did you buy them no, this way? No, it's just commercially bought sheets. And what sort of size do they come in? Well, you can get them in massive sheets, eight by four foot sheets, you know, huge. But, but you would generally buy things, anything from about, you know, A5 size. Okay. Um, so you, know, you can get them at sort of a fairly small size. Yeah, you, the hobby, hobby sizes there. And what about the thickness? Because I'm guessing that with glass it comes in a... Very... Yeah, this is all around three mil. Okay, and is that, that's a pretty standard sort of size, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, that's sort of... First big for stained glass, yeah, because the okay. heart of the lead is only five mil, so you, okay. you couldn't go much deeper. Much more than that. And if you're going to use something presumably like the lantern that you bought, you, I'm guessing that the, 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 the margins that they make these things to are that kind yeah, of Yeah, and you're adding size. weight as well, actually. Yeah. Hang on, is that my motor? <laughs> no, nobody's going to take the skip, don't worry. Um, okay, well, before we move on, I don't know about you, but I'm feeling a bit parched. Yeah. Cup of tea. We could do with a cup of tea. A crafty brew. Should you have a crafty brew? Let's have a crafty brew. Alison, get the kettle on! It's time for a crafty brew. And while we have our break, we want you to enjoy our next segment, which is the Craft Show Quickie. Hi there, I'm Jess Bunning. I'm here with the Craft Show Quickie today. I'm here in the Craft Centre in Bourne, um, where you can see some of my items for sale. We've got a workshop going on in the background. So I'm going to be showing you how to decoupage uh, an item today. So let's go straight to it. So, sort of materials that you'll need for decoupaging. Um, you'll need some brushes to paint with glue on. So you can get several different sizes and gauges of brush. This is just a small decoupage number four brush there. Uh, number five brush. Um, so you want to make sure it's a nice soft bristled brush. Um, you don't want to rip your paper when you're painting your glue on. 
So that's just a small one there. Or, um, so like I say, as long as you make sure it's nice and soft bristled, um, just any sort of home DIY brush um, would work fine as well. Um, yeah, you also need uh, a ruler to measure out your box and your papers. Um, some scissors. Uh, I've got some small scissors there if you've got little intricate bits to, to cut or just some standard size scissors there. Obviously some items to um, to cover. So obviously we've got a chest like that that I've already done. Um, it's a nice piece there. It doesn't have to be a box, it can be just a, a standard um, like decorative piece if you like. You have to be a little bit careful these ones are a little trickier because there's a lot of intricate pieces you have to try and get into there um, but today I'm going to be showing you how to decoupage a box like this so you've got your paper um, several different types of paper you can use so you've got this one that is um, quite a thin paper a little bit difficult to work with but has a lovely pattern on it there we're going to be using this one today which I've already started to cover it here, as you can see. So I would recommend that you get an official decoupage glue as they are thicker than PVA and they add a nice gloss. So, you're just gonna, I've already cut out the top piece here. It's just as simple as, um, I have to just put it on there, trace around it with a pencil and then press it down. So, once you get to this stage, quite simple you'll just I like to cover it in sections um, rather than putting it all of the glue down you'll find that um, some of it will dry quick and others and then when you come to sticking your paper on it might not be wet anymore so this this glue tends to dry quite quickly so I like to stick it in sections like this so I'm just covering a little piece here line up my paper and then I'll fold it back and go under it with the rest of the glue like so so you can see that this box is in pieces at the moment so it will look similar to this one here with the, the clasps and the um, hinges on the back but I like to take the hinges off as you find that it's easier to get a nice clean piece of paper on otherwise you're trying to put your paper around the hinge and it's, it's quite difficult to do that so I'm just going to flatten it down it's quite important you try and get it as smooth as possible any creases that might show up Although, um, putting creases in it can be a, a feature. So underneath here, I have pleated around the corner there. So you could, you could actually add that as a feature. Almost done here. So once you've glued your whole sheet on, then you want to go over the top of the sheet with glue as well and what that'll do is add on a nice sheen to the piece and it'll also help secure the paper on so that it doesn't rip or tear. You know what, I think I might get my larger brush here so that I can paste over the top of there nicely now that I know it nice and secure. And this will dry clear as well, but it's nice to see it so that you know you've not missed any bits. Make sure that you're making your brush, brush strokes one direction because they will show up as well once the glue has dried. And there you have it, you've got some excess around there. So I would say once the glue is dry, go in with your scissors 
or some sort of wood or nail file once the glue's dry and it takes those excess pieces off nicely. And then you can screw all your hinges and that back on. And when it's done, it will look something like that. I hope you enjoyed this craft show quickie today. I'll see you again soon. Bye. Welcome back. Well, I hope you enjoyed that craft show quickie. While you were having a crafty brew, we were having a crafty brew, weren't yeah, we? Yeah. Um, I'm not seeing the biscuits though. Somebody's been idling up. We've got any biscuits out there? We have. Oh, Marie's got some biscuits. Oh, Wait. fantastic. Look, Thank you for that. Then. You're in there. You've got to watch out. <laughs> You've got to watch out for Claire. If you're going to have a biscuit, have yeah. one now because we're going to start working with the lead. Sorry, Mum. I don't want your lead poisoning. Okay. Do you want one? No. No, okay. I'm going to enjoy my biscuit, but don't want to get lead poisoning. Yeah. <laughs> so, if you've just joined us uh, in the studio, we've got Claire Hart. Claire is doing, uh, is making a, a, a crafty stained glass um, sun catcher. Sun catcher. I was going to say dream catcher. I don't know why I had that <laughs> sun catcher. Um, and uh, where are we up to so far? Well, whilst we've been drinking tea, <laughs> you know, some of us have been working. Well, some have been working. Well. Yeah, mm. I've cut some strips ready. So okay. we, I demonstrated cutting the strips before. Mm -hmm. So I've cut some strips ready. So I'm just going to cut them the other way now. Mm -hmm. So I've got four fatter ones, which are the outside ones, and four thinner ones for the inside. So you've ones. cut down the length, which we'd seen yep. before. We have the break. Using the rule. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and I'm just going to cut them the other way. So I'm just going to cut the other sides freehand. Okay. So these are the slightly fatter ones. So and what I'm doing here is I'm just laying my cutter. I'm closing one eye so that I can see the wheel of the cutter is coming just on the inside of the line. I thought you were winking at me then. Yeah, no, I'm not. <laughs> Tapping underneath. It comes, it, you know, when you tap it, it's just so, it looks so easy. It does. Yeah, it does. And it doesn't always happen like that when you're a beginner. And I mm -hmm. remember the day that I first learned to cut glass and I went home and cried because I couldn't do it at all. Oh, right. So, so don't be disheartened. Don't be disheartened. Yeah, yeah, don't be disheartened. If, if, you, if you buy a glass cutter and you, and, you, and you find it really difficult, nip down to the picture framing shop, glazers, okay. ask them for some scraps off cuts. They might even give them to you. Oh, yes, good idea. And then just sit there with a box of bits. And just practice. And just practice, because that's all it is. Mm. Just practice and just check that you are you are upright, you're not leaning to side to side, because that's the main thing. Do you think that that's perhaps one of the biggest causes of people it getting is. it wrong? It is, yeah, mm. and, and the pressure thing. And there but are forward different and back's okay. Forward and back is okay. But not and there are um, other cutters as well. I use a pencil cutter like this, but there are other cutters that have a sort of grip that goes up into the middle of your hand here, and you can put a bit more weight on them. Oh, okay. So you might find that if you see those advertised, a lot of people, if you've got slight arthritis, Yes. Um, or you don't usually use your hands, so you don't have yes. a lot of hand strength. You okay. may find those. Well, you've got easier. dexterity issues or Absolutely, anything like that. Absolutely, you may find those. Okay, that right. makes sense. When I do these, I'm just going to number them because <clears throat> although all our bits are more or less the same, mm -hmm. um, you might be doing a pattern where you've got loads of different bits. You've okay. put number two on that one and number one on that one. Does that matter? No, that's because I'm stupid. Oh. <laughs> I didn't know if there was a technical reason. Honestly, which you just is have what to have these people. Eagle eye, you see. These people who point things out to you. No, but don't the viewers you? are going to be going, why is she put number one and number two on that? Naturally blonde. Naturally blonde. And you've used a sharpie on there. <laughs> and is is that going to come off? That of will come off, yeah. That will come off with just a little bit of methylated spirit. Oh, will it? Okay. Yeah, that will come off. But you can't use a regular felt tip or anything because it just, on the glass, it that won't kind of bubble. It comes off straight it? away, mm. yeah. So that, that's even worse, really. So, yeah, so this number two. Cut that one. And again, you're pushing it away from you this time. I am, and that's because I'm, I'm following a line where it's so. I mean, you could pull it towards you, but you won't be able to see where you're going, so no. it's pointless. And it's okay with a straight line; you could probably guess it, um, but you obviously wouldn't be able to um, guess another one. And for the eagle-eyed amongst you, you will have noticed, of course, that Claire is left-handed. I am left-handed, and I have just cut the wrong piece. Ignore that bit. <laughs> I can't talk and work at the same time. I need to do one or the other. <laughs> I don't have that problem. <laughs> Much to Claire's dismay. <laughs> right. Although Let's I'm not concentrate really now, shall okay. we? Okay, sorry, sorry, Mum. <laughs> <laughs> what number is this now then? Three. It's a bit like paint by numbers. It is, yes. It? But you'd be amazed how confused you get very easily. Um, and you need to tick, mark them off when you've done them because what happens is you get terribly carried away and mm -hmm. then you suddenly work out you've got five number fives. Yes. <laughs> I can imagine that. that it's happened happen. so many times. It's happened so many times. So, uh, yeah, just make sure that you number them as you go. Okay. 
Now this is one of those little pieces on the end here. So I'm just going to use my grazing baking pliers. Mm -hmm. So I can just snap that little piece off like Okay. That. Yeah. So we've used these pliers, and you were saying earlier that these are not just like pliers that you just get from the local DIY no, shop. No, you find particular. that the teeth on those are too sort of... Um, well, ferocious for want of a better word, you know, they're too big really, yes. and you would find that it would actually break the glass on the edge, you'd end up with jaggedy edges. Okay, good. So that's our first four pieces. Now in the middle, a bit of a cheat, but I have some one of these lovely lenses. Oh, where'd you get that from? Now they come from suppliers as well, mm -hmm. and you can buy all different shaped bevels. You can buy long pencil bevels, mm -hmm. um, all sorts of different ones. I wonder if you had something at home that maybe you wanted to kind of upcycle or recycle, or uh, you know something that you could then use the yeah, glass you, you, and recut it. You can, yeah, you can use um, other bits and bobs that you can set in. So you mm. could. Um, like this beveled piece? Yes, as long as it's got a thin edge, it will fit in the lead. So, yes. you, so that potentially you could put something in there that was quite interesting. Or again, if you had something <coughs> like the lantern or like a frame, perhaps a really nice frame yep, that you had, you and you wanted to replace the glass in that, yep. this would be a good way to yep, do it. Do that. Okay. These ones out the way that I've done. So I'm just working round in my colours, so I've just done it so they're going to set against each other. And you're turning the pattern. I'm turning the as pattern each yourself. time, mm. rather than. Um, we nearly there. And one thing I should mention as well is that a lot of this commercial glass that you buy like this has got a smooth side and a rough side. And this isn't particularly rough on one side. Some okay. of the glasses that we use have real nobbles on them. You can mm -hmm. see this one here. Okay. Obviously, for obvious reasons, mm -hmm. cut on the smooth side. On the smooth you, side. Otherwise, you'd be going. Da, 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 okay. As you were cutting on. That makes but sense. Yeah, but something that if it's not obvious to you. No. And you if you can't tell actually which is the smooth side and which is the rough side, the best way to do it is to just close your eyes. Okay. And just feel both surfaces. Oh, okay. And actually, your fingers are easier to pick it up than your eyes are. Yes, because it's not always so, obvious. Because when you look at the glass, no, you're looking no, at no, it, no. you see through to the but side. But the smooth side, yeah. You know, try to cut on whichever is the smoothest side. And some of them you just can't tell at no. all. Okay. I'm just using our little pliers here. And you'll notice that all the bits I snap off, I'm trying to do it into the dustpan and brush because mm -hmm. that obviously cuts down on all the waste. And it's always the little pieces that cut you. Yes. These little bits that come off like that. And having the loose pattern again means you can pick the pattern up. Yeah. And, yeah, yeah. and sort of that, spend yes, and just keep doing and just keep sweeping mm. up. Um, fact, very I'm rarely, really move the biscuits, yeah, move the, the biscuit. Glass. You really do need to be quite health and safety conscious when you're doing this. Yeah. Um, because you don't want glass chips in your tea. No, you <laughs> certainly don't. And in fact, it's a good idea to wear some um, goggles. Yeah. Of course, Claire's got glasses I've got on. Reading glasses on. So she's it. she's relatively safe. Although you can wear these over the top. I'm sitting back a bit, and mm -hmm. the, and the bits are just sort of um, immediately in front of Claire. So yeah. particularly if you're doing any nibbling, if you're nibbling little pieces. Make off, sure so you put your eyes yeah, protected. Make sure because you know, obviously, cutting your finger is one thing, but getting a chunk in your eye is yes. another. Yes. And then, so because you obviously do workshops yeah. yourself. Just remind us of your emails, just because you haven't got your website up and running yet. Not yet. If they want to email you, it's heart, heart, dot, H -A -R -T, yeah, yeah, dot, dot Claire, Claire, C L A I R E, yep. at live.co.uk. Live. Yeah, live.co.uk. Up there for thinking, yep. down there for dancing, is what they say. <laughs> and so you, you can email Claire about um, any upcoming workshops. We're in South Lincolnshire, yep. not too far from Peterborough, Stamford, that kind of area. Nottingham, we're an hour from. And, so, yeah, Leicester. Um, Leicester. Quite a few students come from Leicester. So come over and have a look. And talking of workshops, of course, what we like you to do is comment on the page. If you've got a workshop, if you've got a group, anything like that, and you want to spread the word, the craft show is all about sharing. So send in a, a picture, send in some information, and we will um, mention it. In actual fact, Claire, we've got one in uh, for this week again, for this show, uh, sent by Kim Moore for Handmade in Peterborough. Funny mm -hmm. enough, we were just talking about Peterborough. And um, if you want to have a look, go onto Facebook, type in Handmade in Peterborough. And I particularly like this because this particular group, they meet in a pub, as you probably see that from the like picture. That sounds like my kind of workshop. It is, and, it's, <laughs> well, they, and what they do is they you, you come and you bring your own crafty bits and you craft together. Oh, that's really nice. And that's really nice. And they, of, they often go on outings and stuff. But I think it's on a Monday night at seven o'clock. Have a look, Handmade in Peterborough mm -hmm. on... Uh, uh, on Facebook 
and you can find out when they've got it. Thank you, Claire, for sending that in. Don't forget, please send in some details of yours as well. So we've got those bits cut now. Yeah, I've got those bits cut, so we're, we're going to move on. We're going to have okay. to do you want this moment. bit here? Yeah, I'm going to slide you over. Okay. So here's one we made bits. earlier. Yeah, here's one made earlier. Now what I've done here is I've attached the pattern to a board. Try to work on chipboard if you can, but you know chipboard's getting quite hard to find now because it's kind of it's not as popular as it used to be. Oh. Not MDF though, okay. because it's really hard to nail into and then pull the pins Well the chipboard, so. yeah, you should be able to get that from Builders Merch. There's floorboards if you're... They, yeah, they're floorboards all, they're all are, they are yeah. thicker. Yeah. Um, now two batons of wood yes. along to make an L shape okay. on the outside of your pattern. Yes. When you nail your wood in, make sure you nail it all the way, because if you leave your nails sticking out, you'd have a tendency to cut your wrist open on them. Okay. So you may feel like slashing your wrist halfway through, but... Don't Good tip, that. actually, then, is if you've got a little screwdriver, just when you finish, like Philip said, you should, and just give it a tap with a hammer afterwards, just push the head yeah, so below. Yeah, so it doesn't catch your hand. Right, Good work okay. into the day. Right, now we're going to use, on the outside, we're going to use a... A C can you guess what that's called? Yeah, it's actually U-shape, but close. That's oh. a good guess. That was an intelligent guess. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So and we're going to we, use that one for the outside. Yeah, that's going to be Claire. for the outside. Okay. And then for the inside, we use an H section. Yeah. It, it could be an I. Could be an I, or it could be an I section. Yeah. Go, Just right, to complicate. And then we've got a slight different change of tools. <laughs> okay. We've got a lead knife. Okay. And a hammer. And I've got a little pot of pins here. Ooh. And some little bits of lead that I use as guards, so that we're not nailing up against the lead. Now this is where your health and safety comes in. Do I need my goggles? Well, no, not so much your goggles, oh. but no eating or drinking oh, or put smoking or now. doing anything else you might be doing. Picking your nose, right? biting your fingernails or anything else. You do know me very well. <laughs> I can do all of those at the same time. So you start off with your first piece of glass, mm -hmm. pop it in. Because of course it is, and it's real lead, isn't it? Is it is real it's lead, and what comes off of your hands is lead. So if you, so you might want to, if you're a little bit health and safety conscious, Put some barrier cream on. Okay. Just a tub of barrier cream like and you get And then don't be putting it in your mouth. Yeah, don't put it in your mouth. And then if you if, if the end of lead you happen to have is a bit sort of chewed up, just cut it cleanly. Inside. This is going to be around shaking. Oh wow, that's now. that surprises me. Mm. So you hold your lead cutter in your hand like this. Yes. Finger down the side, and these are sharpened. So when you buy a lead cutter, it won't have a blade on it. So don't panic okay. when you can't cut through your glass uh, your lead with it. Um, because um, it won't have a blade on it, you need to put a blade on it. Okay. So you put your first piece of lead in, and then you need to cut that back. Now, if I was to cut that the same length as the piece of glass, yes. when I come down with this piece of lead here, yes. it's going to be in the way, isn't it? Oh, uh, of course. So I've got to cut it back ever so slightly. So I'm okay. going to cut it back probably, oh, I don't know, whatever that width is there. What's that, two mil? Yeah, a couple of mil. A couple, yeah, couple, couple of mil, a couple of mil back. So mark it, two slide million it out of the money. way. And this is where standing up helps. You do, you do need, you need, a bit the of, you need a bit of pressure. If your corners go down, lift your corners up. Okay. So is this a bit of trial and error then, knowing how much margin you need it to It is. Leave? It's one of those things. And obviously different sizes of lead, because you get different widths of lead. Obviously it's yes. a different amount each time. So yes. a little bit of trial and error. And of course, the C, you've got the C section or the U section, the I section or the H section. Yeah, yeah, whichever. Tomato, tomato. Yeah. And... Um, it, obviously, the I section or the H section is for the centre because essentially it's got the lip on both sides, yep. and the C section just has the lip on, on one the outside. side. So you so just use that as an edge lead. Yeah. Okay. So if you don't cut it quite perpendicular, I don't know if you can see that that one isn't quite straight down. You mm -hmm. can just take a little bit off the bottom. Okay. Just take those little bits off. Slide it down here. Now you have to remember when you come to the outside that you're actually going to have a deeper lead around the outside, so that does need to come back a little bit further. Okay. Um, and you could always get yourself a little piece of this just to sort of like more or less measure it up to. Yes. Where that comes it's to like the a, edge. It creates a frame, doesn't it? This the U section on the outside. Yeah. So is this the same kind of technique if you were making sort of a? Uh, most people would be used to seeing a stained glass window in like a church. Yeah, it or, is. It's or, the completely it? traditional. It's the same yeah, principle. Completely traditional sort of leading sort of method. Hmm. Now, when you get to the point you can no longer hold it together. Um, I'll get to that point, point all the I time. I do, Claire. usually about, about 10.30 in the morning. Yeah. <laughs> um, use a little guard, a little scrap piece of glass, um, glass, lead. Lead, I can't yeah. speak now. Um, and just put it against your real lead. Yes. And then we have these. These are proper horseshoe nails. Oh. I've never, I've never seen one of those. So yeah. these are not a craft item, but you, this is a horseshoe nail. It is a horseshoe nail, yeah. You, you do buy them from glass suppliers. Oh, do you? If you don't know a friendly blacksmith or ferret. Oh, so you can yeah. get these from craft suppliers because yeah. they're used yeah. for other things. That's so the interesting. You, you put the nail up against the lead and okay. the lead up against the other lead and a couple of taps. 
Okay. And that's why you need to be on chipboard. Yes. Because if you were hammering into MDF at that point, it's going to start to It's hard. Music. Yeah, and you okay. can't pull it out. That okay. just helps you. That just gives you a little bit of, oh, you know, see. holding so it together. It together. Because otherwise, you end up with a situation where you haven't got enough hand uh, fingers to hold it all together. So same on this side. Oh. Why is it that you put it against the lead and not against because the... Because it will make digs out of it. Oh, I see. So it's to prevent it. You don't want to yeah, put the, the pin next to can your you, Can you see lead? that one that I've nailed into? Because you'll... you'll um, if we show that so over, just over there, you'll yeah. see that. So you'll damage the frame. You, you know, will, yeah, yeah. And then you'll end up with your whole piece. Love little so digs So use all another way bit over. against it. Yeah, and just use another little okay. piece against it. So I'm going to put the next piece in here. And you're building it up into this L shape all the time. Mm. So you can see that naturally this line, this line, yes. that line, this line, then your middle. Okay. And we kind of work That's on good. like that, really. Now I'm conscious that time is rattling on. As, um, we're we? Slowly, as we are. <laughs> so we're running out of time. Um, but so I want to see sort of uh, get close to being as finished as, as possible. Mm -hmm. So once we've got the glass in, we've got the, the lead in, yep. which we're doing now, and you yep. spend a bit of time doing that. Presumably, uh, we need to somehow fix it together. We do, yeah, because obviously if you took the pins out, the whole thing's just going to fall into a pile of bits of glass. So how do we go about doing that? So then we move on to the soldering stage. Should we have a quick look at that? Yep, yeah, so that's Let that. me grab that. We'll keep sliding these boards off, I, th we? I think that what we should do uh, is that we should get you back on for another show. Mm -hmm. if, I think hopefully you agree with that at home. Uh, so that we can see, because it's unconscious not to sort of try and overrush it, because we've only got about two or three minutes left. I can't believe right. where's it gone? Here's the one I made earlier. Ooh. Yeah, we're back to a rainbow one here. Okay. Um, I have a soldering iron here, so it's, it's all about another health and safety. Yes. <laughs> soldering iron. Hot. Yes. Hot, hot, hot. As you would expect, hopefully. And we have it on a little stand here so that you, you're not leaving it on the table because it will burn a hole on the table. Yeah. We have our solder. This is 50-50 solder that I'm using. That's 50% solder, 50% tin. Okay. Um, it comes in different grades, but if generally for general leading use, 50-50. Okay. It's fine. So where would we get that from? Again, from the same suppliers. Okay. Same glass suppliers. Good stuff. Yeah, look them up. Um, and we need a flux. Okay. And this is a wax candle. Okay. A tallow candle. So sold. you can just get, this is a standard flux, okay? It just needs to be a tallow candle. It's got to be a tallow candle. candle. Okay. So again, from the supplies. And you rub that on every joint. So on your knees and elbows. And what's the purpose of that? That that helps the solder to flow. It cleans the joint okay. and helps helps the solder to flow. And we just do every other joint like that. Great stuff. And then we start soldering. Now, if you hold your soldering iron, hold your hand over the top of your soldering iron. Okay. Underneath like that, you okay. end up with it like on the point of the iron. Yes. If you have it flat like that, you have a bigger uh, area. Okay. Yeah. Good stuff. And then you want to just support yourself with your finger, carve a little piece of solder off. Now, can you see there's a little bubble of solder underneath there? Yeah. Can you see that? And then just dot it on. Oh, okay. So a little dot. So it goes, a little goes a long way. It does, yeah. So just carve a little piece off. I'm probably carving off two or three millimetres at a time. Well, just while you're doing that, carry on doing what you're doing, because yep, we're rapidly yep. out of time. And uh, just keep, uh, um, uh, you can see, hopefully uh, close up there, Ooh, with um, Claire doing the uh, the soldering there, and I'll just talk over you while you're doing that, because you can win uh, the uh, the uh, sun catcher mm -hmm. that Claire has made on the show, and uh, very straightforward way to do that. I'll show you this here. This is hopefully what it's going to look like. Very similar to this. All you need to do, very straightforward. Visit our Facebook page, um, of course, uh, facebook.com forward slash the craft show TV. Visit the page, and all you need to do is share it. Just share the page. And what we'll do is we'll pick somebody at random and we'll contact you if you're going to be receiving our fantastic sun catcher here that Claire has uh, made for us. Um, and there you go, it's pretty straightforward. Yeah. So there yeah. we go. I think we, we need to get her on another show, don't we? We need to get you on another show to see uh, to see uh, uh, something else because I feel like we've rushed you a little bit yeah, there. But fine. fortunately, time is, time is against us. And how quickly, just super quickly, how quickly does that hold together? Is that it? Yeah, that's it. And that's you flip it. it over? Yeah, flip it over and do the other side. And do the other side. Just remember, joints are hot though. Brilliant. So you need to be careful, health and safety all the way. Yeah, Listen, Claire, it's been an absolute pleasure having you on the show. I'm saying we haven't got more time, here. but please do. Don't forget, like, page, subscribe to the page, subscribe to the YouTube, and we'll see Claire again soon. Bye. Bye.